Time for a break from our show to pay the bills. Check out beacons.ai slash comics fund profit for all the C4 FAP links you could ever need all in one place. You can provide feedback, listen, support, share, enjoy these. We have our Patreon there. You can buy us a beer or a coffee. You can check out our Instagrams, our Twitters, our Facebooks. Check out our YouTube page. You can email us. You can listen to our podcasts on Patreon, if you're a subscriber, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, on Podbean. We have Google Podcasts on there. We have an Amazon wish list. You want to buy Kyle and I something? Fine. You can do that here. We appreciate it. We have Kyle's RPG podcast listed on there, so you can check out his Dork Day Afternoon offerings. We have Cowabunga's links, so you can check out the Cowabunga Deep Discount FOC and Pre-Order list. Get on that. That's our LCS, so you can check that out as well. And we want to just give you opportunities to say hi, to check out what we're doing, support us if you would like, or just listen. Check out beacons.ai slash comics fund profit for all the c4 fap links you could ever need thanks back to the show thank you for listening to comics for fun and profit this is kyle and Drew with your sneak peek and next week episode number 887 for comics originally coming out february the 27th and february the 28th and if that sounds familiar that's what i said last week was february 27th and february 28th <laughs> i was but supposed to edit that out is in fact <laughs> The February 27th and 28th. So we are talking about your last week of comics in the month of February. But before Drew and I get into what's coming up in your local comic book shop, Drew, what's going on? Man, we got some bad news this week. Tom Taylor and Bruno oh, Redondo are going to exit Nightwing with their fallen Grayson arc. I thought they'd do it forever. I wanted them to. And... I've I felt I felt like a rejuvenated Nightwing fan mm-hmm. because of those two, and I can't even imagine who's going to follow them, and uh, it's it's going to be tough. It's going to be yeah. a tough follow for sure. I'd felt so very lucky that they were at the helm of that, you know, because at one point in time I wasn't even getting good covers or good anything for it. And then I had Tom Taylor and Bruno Redondo on it. And I was just like, it didn't get better than this. Enjoy it, enjoy it, enjoy it. And now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you did. You did enjoy it. Yeah. So comic books are over. Dreams (laughs) really last. it, it, It does. It makes me sad that it's. That they're not going to be doing it anymore. But I guess, you know, all good things come to an end. <laughs> Cry because it happened, not whatever it is, whatever the saying is. I don't think that's it. I don't think so either. <laughs> I'm not sure what you said is it. <laughs> I've never been good at those either. <laughs> um, anyway, let, let's maybe we can find some good news over. In the image catalog. Oh, I mean, I'll bet we can. Because this I is don't um, cry because it's over. Smile because it happened. Yeah, that's nice. That's a, better that's better to love and lost than never to have loved at all. Yeah, very. I went the Dr. Seuss route. My apologies. But happening over to our good friends at Image Comics, we have the Energon Universe Free Comic Book Day 2024 special on the front. Of course, this is our May 2024 catalog. That's amazing. Yeah. That they're going to do that. That's really, really cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, and we got an Ain't No Grave as yeah. our launch of the month. Scotty Young and Jorge Corona. So Scotty Young's just a writer now. Just a writer, and he's permitting his uh, his artist to do adult art for a Scotty Young uh, created property. This is a double length first issue, not for double length, but also double length price for five ninety nine. <laughs> Mature ages eighteen plus. Action adventure fantasy looks kind of like a western. Yeah, to me, um, unforgiven style journey. That's a Western revenge tale mm-hmm. uh, told through a Guillermo del Toro esque lens. Yeah, 
genre a genre bending adventure begins i like scotty young most of the stuff i've read that he's done from fairyland and a couple other things i've enjoyed so um i like fantasy action western but better than the most jorge things. corona art's great right yes. Oh, it's yeah. beautiful. Um, yeah. So I don't I don't blame him for handing over the reins. Um, they give us like 10 pages in here, I think. <laughs> yeah. And it's all gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Uh, a little sparse on dialogue, which is fine um, since I got 48 pages. But yeah, there's there's plenty to chew on in there to make your decision. Yeah. Speaking of chewing on our next title bear pirate viking queen number one from sean lewis with jonathan marks and baravecchia on art or is that jonathan marks baravecchia i don't know if that's one name yes that is one name that's one person's name baravecchia rendering in stunning watercolor i don't know that's worse action adventure fantasy fairy tale folk tale legends and mythology another five dollar book this time we're getting 72 pages though and a three issue miniseries well i mean it's not awful but it isn't stunning it's kind of murky Mm, yeah i like the big splash page though the big splash page is pretty impressive yeah what is that like a 15 panel grid 18 (laughs) panel grid something like that more than that from our good friend Joe Casey, we have Blood Squad 7, number one. Yeah, that's a 90s image got all over it right there. Superheroes, baby. Just what Drew likes from his yeah. image comics. Hard pass for the on this. Yeah, this is like totally ripped from the 90s. Yeah, historical fiction superheroes. Historical fiction? That's what it says. Okay. Uh, I like the the little quadrant here where they're giving us the uh, a few of the incentive covers and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to pass on all that. And now we're there. Enter John Universe 2024 special one shot number one. Four dollars. 32 pages. Robert Kirkman. A special new printing of Enter John Universe. How can it be four dollars if it's a free comic book day? I was wondering that myself. The, the we, did we forget what what free comic book day is all about? Yeah, I don't know if we're just printing the free comic book day. Book. You can you can come to free comic book day or you can buy this. Yeah. Is that the deal? Yeah. Mm, I don't know. That's a bummer. But so th- what is this like a primer of all things? Transformers, G.I. Joe, Void time. Rivals. Or yeah. maybe just kind of catches you up on what kind of universe we're in. They're all new stories. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess. I guess that's okay. You know, you don't. You don't want to trug, trundle out to the local comic book shop and try to wait in line for this. You just order yours. <laughs> that's right. I want it delivered and I will pay. Whatever. Yeah. I guess I get that. All right, now we have Gromit's number one of a seven issue series from Rick Remender and Brian Posehn. Hmm. Hmm. Drew, again, our taglines are action adventure, historical fiction, and humorous. Do they know what historical fiction means? I think if you just say it's at a certain time in in the past, it becomes historical fiction. So, be- okay, so because it's set in 1984, that becomes historical fiction. Yes. Okay, that's dumb. <laughs> that's not what that means <laughs> i like some of the, okay so we've got some dope uh incentive covers as well we've got the asteroids machine cover the 7-eleven cover which they're calling seven heaven cover yeah i mean this uh, this is this is probably the, something i'd like and the lords of dogtown cover so that's a galaga that's a galaga machine isn't it or galassian yeah. That's Gallagher, right? <laughs> Look close. I don't know the answer to this. I, I thought it was Gallagher or... That's Gallagher. Yeah. It's Gallagher. They're giving us some really crispy... Man, that's some good art. So shout out to Brett Parsons and Moreto Denicio. Uh, really good art. Yeah, it, it it's... 
yeah, I'm definitely, this is totally me. Rick Remender and great art. Uh, sign me up, man. Yeah. I can even stomach uh, Brian Posehn. <laughs> That's awesome. Now we're back, now we're into Legos. Image has the Lego property. Lego Ninjago Shatter Spin number one. This doesn't fit, does it? This doesn't fit an image. Yeah, even you know, knowing that we have some properties and things like G.I. Joe and uh Transformers and things like that, Lego just seems out, out of it. place. Yeah. yeah. It, it should be over a dynamite or IDW or something. Shouldn't be here. Drive Wong on story and art. So this is like a different property. This didn't come with the Hasbro purchase, right? This is something else. This is another no, license they've it. done. Yeah. And is it Skybound? No. Yes, it is. So it's well, it's, got, so, it's got the Skybound logo in the bottom left. Yeah. So it's a collaboration between Lego and Skybound. So that is Kirkman. All right. Money, 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 money. Yeah, just throw it away, bro. Monolith, number one, from our boy Sean Lewis, a three-issue miniseries, action, adventure, horror, and superheroes. Good news is two ninety nine for this book, 24 pages. So is this a... Um, yeah, this is a spawn verse deal. The origin of the hulking hell spawn is finally revealed. What connection does he have to one of the most savage of his kind? Omega spawn followed his journey. Yeah. Hard pass. The singularity OGN is written by bear McCreary. If you remember bear McCreary, he did the music for walking dead. Oh, wow. Did the music. I said, <laughs> not wrote Walking Dead. So that's crazy. Also, it's a companion to his concept album. Oh, <laughs> weird. Not interested, but weird. <laughs> Thanks, but no. Mm-hmm. Uh, lore Remastered, a one number one of three. This is Ashley Wood and T.P. Louise. Um, I don't know anything Ashley Wood he's done. It's uh, remastered from when, I wonder. What am I looking at? I mean, it looks kind of interesting. But it's it's really creepy, murky murky art. What is the word of the day today? Almost like a boy Ben Temple, but very Temple Smith art. Only yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Oh, and then we slide into the Whisper Queen. Also a three issue <laughs> miniseries. A What's the deal with three issue miniseries? I mean, hey guys, you got anything that's not fleshed out at all? Yeah. Um, here. <clears throat> you know how the trajectory of profitability in comics is you <laughs> sell a lot for that first issue and 25% less for the second issue and 25% less for the third issue. Well, you lose too much when you get to the fourth issue, so don't even do a fourth issue. Mm -hmm. It just makes more sense this way. And if it does well, well, then we'll do another three. Good art. Got the Chris LGBTQ plus on there. Interesting. The Royal Guard has sent their most capable bounty hunters after the accomplices in the King's murder. Havro, once the King's most skilled assassin, must find the killers before they and the bounty hunters, including her son, are wiped out by the kingdom's most feared specter, the Dark Whisper. Okay, so... So this is the, the team behind White Trees. And do you remember White Trees? I, I vaguely remember White Trees. Did it? Yeah. I don't remember finishing White Trees. I didn't either. And is this set in that same world then? Yes. Is Bla Black Sand was White yeah. Trees? Okay. Yeah. Well, let's. This is going to tell us all we need to know on the next one because they're reissuing both issues of the White Trees in a one shot. Uh, this will collect White Trees one and White Trees two here. So get this and then you'll be caught up and ready to rock 
with the what was a Whisper Queen. Yeah, and they were able to get a Fiona Staples cover, B, <gasps> which you know really she really shouldn't have time for that because she should be working on Saga. <laughs> Quit taking your little break from Saga. If you got time to do B covers, you got time to work on Saga. That's what I say. Well, yeah. it's pretty. Yeah. Okay, I remember white. I remember white trees. Yeah. Okay. I didn't like it. <laughs> Zadarsky's not infallible. How dare you? Ava's Demons Book Two trade paperback. Nope, don't remember that one at all. Blood Commandment from your boy Simon Kadronsky. Is that my boy? Yeah. Didn't realize. Well, he's writing a crime and mystery horror book here. Issues one through four collected. Yeah, so I missed this. So this would be good for me, this trade paperback, because I missed this completely. Trade paper for Rob Liefeld's Blood Strike Battle Blood Book One. Somebody drew his feet for him. <laughs> trade paperback three for Dark Ride. Ooh, deep cuts on a trade. That would be cool for my boy Kyle Higgins and Joe Clark. Maybe I'm there or not there. Oh, how many issues is that? that six. Is six. I bet that's lengthy. And then there's Tony S. Daniels' Edenwood, which I wanted to read and did not. Here's a good place to catch those five issues. Yeah, I read that first issue, and it was way too much fantasy, which is obvious from looking at it. But Yeah. Gunslinger Spawn 4, Hack and Slash, Back to School Trade from Zoe Thurgood. I don't remember. I don't remember those other issues. I missed them somehow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Out there they. Yeah, one bad. Trade paperback for a haunted girl. Trade for Hexagon Bridge. Newburn getting its second trade paperback. Knights season one part one. Hard covers for Spawn. Sunstone trade number eight. Siphon trade two. Hey, first trade for Transformers, Drew. Oh, nice. Yeah. Featuring a direct market exclusive cover from John Boy Myers. That's that um, B. That's the B cover. Yeah, it looked new. Very nice. I never read the uh, Universal Monsters. I started it, never finished it. From our boy James Tinney in 120 pages. Yeah, it's a lot. A bloody dozen is issue six. Up to issue six, man. I think I'm only on two. Issue four of the cabinet. <laughs> the last Cobra Commander. Some really, yeah. really good covers there. Um, I just got issue two of Cobra Commander, so I'm hoping it's good. Deviant five of nine. We're still rocking some Santa Claus covers in May. Drawing by Blood 2. Oh, Deviant was really good, that first issue. Really good. Feral number three. Good luck at Bug. Tony Flakes. Ooh, a Jenny Frizen cover. Yeah. I'm going to have to read that for sure. Fish Flies, six of seven. I'm still th- I'm like three issues behind on the forge. I got to catch up. What's that? What's that? Issue. Forge is on issue eight. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Geiger, I just kind of just gave up on. Right. Luckily, there's a new Geiger for you. Yeah, gave up on it. G.I. Joe, the real American hero, 306. 
Gunslingers Bomb 32, Holy Roller 6 of 9. Gave up on that too. Covers are getting interesting. I hate Fairyland 14. Ice Cream Man 40. Cover B is a Ouija board cover. Feels like that's been going a while. Yeah. This is the second issue of their mm. current arc. Kaya at 18. Yeah, King, King Spawn still around. Last wow. Mermaid. Yeah, I don't remember that one. Oh, the Tiny Axolotl. That's that's right. That's right, yeah. I see him. Uh, Lobo they, Man 10. Napalm Lullaby. It's another Rick Remender. <laughs> Wyatt Kennedy's Knights, number seven. That's an ongoing. <laughs> the One Hand from our boy Rob V. Dustin Weaver Park Packless. That City. Yeah, we don't want to do that. Red coat. That was Jeff Johns, right? Yes. And was that a? That was part of this unnamed thing, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ghost machine and the unnamed or whatever. Yeah. Rogue Sun's part of the massive verse. I don't want to be part of any verses. <laughs> Sacrificers eight. That's some wicked covers. Yeah, another Rick Remender. Gosh, man, he's got a lot going on. Cosmic oh, some bills. Sam and Twitch case files three. Apparently it's an ongoing. I for some odd reason thought that was a mini. Yeah, um, I bet you it got some early heat because you know the nostalgia factor and. Either way, that's good. Everything spawn is hot. No doubt. So, so yeah, Scorch is that the one? Is that one of the ones that's ending? Scorch. Mm-hmm. So six fingers and then the one hand are they're they're connected, right? <laughs> I think so. They have very similar cover looks. Yeah. Do the Game Boy cover on something that's Epic Ten. Uh, no, that's speaking to you, isn't it? Yes. They're just like, hey, Kyle, we know you got a little bit more money than you <laughs> need to keep hold of. <laughs> Give us your money. Yeah, exactly. Your generation has a little bit extra. Kyle, who's the pink Transformer? Oh, I know, but I can't think. That is that is a that is a, a real oh, yeah. transformer. That's that's, that's a, an existing. I mean, that wasn't part of my original set, but <coughs> creatures from the Black Lagoon. R C A R C E E. R C. That's the name of the transformer. Yep. A R C E E. R C. R C. Okay. It's cool. No, they're still giving us some good covers to it. Well, we're, I'm assuming they're going to give us some good covers. They're giving us multiple covers. Okay, and Void Rivals 9, we're getting the first Energon Iron appearance Eyed. of everyone's favorite Triple Changer Autobot. What's a Triple Changer Autobot? Um, He can be both a robot, a car, and something else, I guess. I'm guessing he can turn into multiple things. That looks like Ironhide, but I don't know. Okay. It wasn't one of them a gun? Turn into a gun? Multiple of them are guns. I mean, Megatron's a gun. Oh. I thought That's I had just Springer. I don't know that I'm familiar with Springer. Man, I've got a World Tree. I missed this one completely. James Tinney and I can't. I just can't keep up with him. He's too prolific. <laughs> ah, you can get a skateboard deck that is from Low, the Rick Remender Greg Chichini mm-hmm. book constructed on seven ply maple. That's hilarious. Skateboard, get yourself. We need a comic for front of fun and profit skateboard, dude. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. That is pretty sweet. Yeah, so Springer could change from a robot to an armored car to a helicopter. So he had three different forms. Okay. That was probably like the second or third wave of yeah. Transformers. At yeah, that they were, yeah, he was what they called the G1 series. I was in and out a little bit before Gen 1, the G1s. Fantastic. Well, tons of good stuff. 112 yeah. pages, 110 pages of goodies from Image. I liked a lot of this stuff. Mm-hmm. So we're off to a good start. Uh, DC yeah. was pretty strong, and this Image is even stronger. So this will pro- this will propel us right into the hot 10 from our good friends at CBSI. Yeah, heading over to comicbookinvest.com, finding February 23rd's Hot 10 list, and rank one, Edge of Spider-Verse number one, The Secret Variant. 
another Marvel secret variant that was delivered to shops as a one per store account variant. For some shops, they may have more than one copy as they've gotten one from Penguin and one from Diamond, just like when we had Wolverine 37 and the one shot from Kid Venom. Polybagged and limited as quickly followed the same pattern, starting out at $30, averaging about 40 and some hitting a high of 60 I kind of I respect the one per store as long as they're going to comic shops. Yeah, I can deal with that. That's and two, we have Fantastic Four 209, the first appearance of Herbie, could have snuck on the list last week as many of the lower grade cheap copies have cleared tons of volume as this sells in all grades, but it's averaging between two and thirty dollars in a solid mid grade option. Uh, with some high grades commanding as much as over a hundred dollars. On that note, a newsstand 9.8 sold for $600 this week as the robot's inclusion in the Fantastic Four announcement image has fans banking on his intro into the upcoming MCU. So good old Herbie's here. Captain Marvel number five, the one in 25 Russell, da- Russell Dallman cover, starting off the week with strong pre-sales just before its release in the 50 to $60 range. This book has performed well, as we've seen plenty of Russell Dallman's infinity character covers, but when they are incentive variants, they seem to really hit that sweet spot with collectors shelling out to big bucks. The last two weeks were a best offer of 125 for $75 and a huge on where the last two sales were a best offer on a $125 for 75 and a huge $165 on a $200 ask. A couple of auctions are ending this weekend and are already bid up pretty high. The last auction ended this afternoon with just over $160. We'll see where the ceiling is if it hasn't already been hit. Spider Gwen Smash number three, the one in 25 cover, where they put Dazzler on it. Shocker. Back on the list again as volume doubled from last week. And last week's highs have become the new $80 average. The new highs appear to be about 100 bucks with a few sales. Has this Dazzler variant hit its ceiling yet? We'll see what happens over the next week when these typically level off and recede back towards double to triple ratio. At rank five, we have Ultimate Invasion 4. Jonathan Hickman was only about a $10 book a couple weeks ago, over the last week or so has quickly risen to 25 to 30. Noted as the first appearance of Tony Stark Kang, it seems some speculation on the future of the MCU may be driving some sales here. Ties to the Ultimates universe don't hurt either, as we have a recent announcement for a new Ultimate series on the way. At rank six, we have Wolverine 36. This is, of course, our Helverine, and volume has surged this week. Prices have di- had dipped to $25, but then quickly rebounded to 40 to 45 last week um, and hit highs of 65. CGC 9.8 Savasa went to 175 to 185. At rank seven, we have The Hedge King from Ben Avery, Drew. This is a great story and one that we are looking for to be adapted on an HBO as Game of Thrones may have ended, but Ooh. these side stories within the world still give us plenty to look forward to with Rise of Dragons and now The Hedge King. This was adapted by Image back in the day, and now folks are digging them out of back issue bins. What is a 5 to $10 book last week? And has now jumped to 25 bucks for this first issue. There is a follow-up series that continues the Dunkin' Egg story through DDP, that is also worth keeping an eye on. It's a hedge knight. Yeah. You had give, you had given him a kingdom. Well, did I? His, I said hedge king. He was not a hedge king. He's a hedge knight. My apologies. But I still don't. I still don't recognize it. I don't remember hedge this knight. at all. Was this a Somewhere. quarter book? Probably. They said it was in yeah in back issue bins. Yeah. At rank eight, we have X-Men Adventures number one. 
folks can complain all they want about changes to the X Men '97 cartoon, but that has stopped hasn't. But that had stopped collectors from going back to the first comic adaptation. Cheap for years and can still be found in dollar bins. Higher grade copies and newsstand editions are commanding a decent price, around twenty five bucks. CDC nine point eights are also inching towards two hundred these days. At rank eight, we have Wolverine 88 back on the list again as excitement for Deadpool and Wolverine is pretty high at the moment. Volumes are still strong and raw copies still garner anywhere from 75 to 100 depending on condition. The notable sales on the week is the all-time high for a new stand of 9.6, fetching $325. Ultimate Spider-Man number two, who volumes on this one are insane as plenty of folks were waiting for this after the blockbuster number one issue. Granted, most of the sales were nearly cover price. You will also see many sales getting about 10 bucks or more already on the second issue. We'll see if excitement holds for the new Ultimate Universe, but so far it seems pretty darn strong with the second print of this already announced and a third print with incentive for number one. Awesome on the way. I um, haven't read this, but I'm excited too. Yeah. And notable sales, we have Batman 139, the first appearance of Batgirl. No, not Barbara Gordon, but Betty Kane. An often forgotten about footnote in the annals of Batman lore. This CGC 8.0 grabbed an all-time high for $2,880 this week. It had come close to this price before, but the last sale had dipped to $1,500 before rebounding strong this week. We did not know that. And the other notable sale, Startling Terror 11, classic L.B. Cole cover. It is one of those notable PCH books on many folks' wish list. Pre-code horror. Okay. Yeah, pre-code horror. While it may not be Cole's best cover, it is still one of the fetch one that fetches a big price as this week's sale of the CGC 7.0 went for $27,521, smashing the last sale of $18,000. That's a nice vehicle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> or you can buy this comic. Yeah, no doubt. All right, Drew, this is what people came for. They came for our sneak peek at next week, and we are going to give it to them, Drew. Let's head on over to Lunar Distributions and find the books coming up here at the end of the month, starting with the items from the 27th. A lot of Amazon's attack right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Doesn't do much for me. Bratman Brave and the Bold, that Matina cover. Yeah, you like that? Just like, dang, dude. That's crazy. I kind of like that Francesca Francovia detective, 1082. Mm-hmm. He's just him out in the desert somewhere. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Flash, I don't know what's going on with that Matt Taylor. It's just that's, trippy. Yeah, that's trippy. Somebody's on a drug addled rage. Yeah. But then I, I do like the Dustin Nguyen Green Arrow 9, which is also kind of trippy, but yeah, I really like that. that. That's really good. I think these guys are taking, like, graphic design classes or something. <laughs> They're really stepping up their game. Banging in with a nice Matina cover as well. I wonder how well the um, picture of hands... On a Harley Quinn cover, we're going to sell for Jorge Fornes. So dumb. That's not what people come for Harley yeah. Quinn for, buddy. Nice try. Trying a little too hard on the Power Girl cover ease. And, of course, the sweater weather is garbage. Trying too hard, you said. Yeah. None of those are no, great. No, that's what I'm saying. Heading over to the items for the 28th. Classic LaRue cover on those Destiny New York Mystical Mafia. We get uh, Duke's third issue. Mm-hmm. Declan Shelby cover there for the B. Oh, finally we get Hack Slash Back to School third issue. Finally, yeah, third issue. That's, I think that's been delayed. That's she needs to stop going to cons and sit <laughs> and draw some shit. Moon Man going to a second print for that Kid Cuddy book. That's if nice. you follow Zoe Thurgood on Instagram, it's like the same pattern. She goes to a con, she gets sick. She whines about being sick, getting behind not having her stuff done and then all the stress and anxiety that it causes her. And then she starts. The next post is 
I'm going to be at this next con. And then she <laughs> got, gets her ass in a plane, goes to another con, um, gets sick again, then comes back and rinse and repeat over and over again. I'm like, bish, d- don't do that. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't stop doing that. Stay home. That's you don't get sick if you stay home. Anyway, got to sell, sell her wares, I guess. That's right. Hawk thing. Where, was, where were you at, man, before I went on a rant? I was going on about Moon Man number one, going to a second print. Oh, nice. Nasty. Number seven. Newburn hits 15. That's got to be close to the end. I think they're wrap, wrapping that bad boy up. That might be the end. Let me go back. Mm, no, not quite. Phantom Road. I got way too behind on that one, mm-hmm. which I do sometimes. There's a sickness. Oh, that's a 14 issue. I was thinking that was a four issue miniseries. That's 14 issues. <laughs> Whoa. A lot more, a lot more there. <laughs> a lot more sickness than I thought there yeah. would be. World Tree, there it is at eight. Ah, that's too far. I can't catch up. <laughs> One of these I'm always going to have to catch up with a trade, I guess. Yep. All right. I'm heading over to previewsworld.com, finding our boom titles. Are you getting uh, pen and ink? Grim pen and ink? It's neat, but no. Yeah. Slow burn, a five of five. Finish it up. Oh, my God. Yeah. Amazing Spider-Man 44 is the last gang war. Well, no, wait. No, it's the last Spider-Man gang war. I think. Yeah. One more after that. Second. The penultimate. Quiet. Penultimate gang. I can't wait. Can't wait to get my book back. I like the giant size Fantastic Foy for Dave Darbin Deadly Foes variant. Oh, man. That's awesome. All the little villain heads. Mm-hmm. Is that a is that like a, what Perez used to do? I think so. So is this um part of the new Fantastic Four or is this like a throwback? It's reprinting Fantastic Four thirty three. Yeah. So yeah, that answers my question. I guess. Trade paperback for Moon Knight City of the Dead. Back simile for Secret Wars two. So weird. My power pack back into the storm issue two. Spider Punk. Arms Race gets his first issue of a new volume. Oh, Thrawn got a second print mm-hmm. along with his second issue. I did enjoy the first Thrawn. Very good. First Star Wars I've dipped my toe back in for quite some time. What if Venom number one? No, not for me. Really like that Rose Besh White Widow 4 cover. Okay, it's not bad. Uh-uh. Seeing if I can find anything I need in Dynamite. I think the only thing I'm reading is Thundercats from them. Mm, maybe a Red Sonia. Maybe. Maybe. If they play their cards right. <laughs> Beneath the Trees Where Nobody Sees, Issue 1, Third Prep. Oh, that's. I thought it was way more than that already. And a very, very cool Third Prep. Yeah, it's a nice cover. Canary is that Scott Snyder book? Is that right? Yeah, Scott Snyder yeah. and Dan Panosia. It's issue three. You're talking about our boy, Ben Temple Smith. He is uh, the cover artist for Crashdown number two from Massive. And he gets the cover A. And Oh, does he? Yeah. Nice. Oh, he's the, yeah, he's yeah, the yeah, interior. He's the, that's right. That's right. He's he was the, the inside artist on those two. Oh, man. I have to check this out. Big fan of his. I'm not a big murky guy, but I like his murky. Oh, well, yeah, we take him. D&D Saturday Morning Adventures having two covers there for its second issue. Duke 3 we talked about. Don't get confused. There's Eden Frost 3 from Mad Cave and Eden Wood 5 from Image True. <laughs> yeah, that would be easy to do, to pick up the wrong ones off the off the stack. Talked a bit about Ice Cream Man. We've got uh, the cover A for issue 38. Um, very nightmare. Escape from Gary Land. Yeah. Ooh, Ribbon Queen's finishing up with its eighth and final issue. Can't wait to see what happens there. What is Bar- Band of Bards? Mm-hmm. That's a $9 book. That's what that is. Because it's two two issues jammed together, which we don't we don't really we don't really cotton to that, do we, Kyle? No. You can't circumvent the rules that way. Just give us one. Three issue book, a three three ninety nine book. That's what we want. That's what we need. Yeah, I mean we'll take it. We'll take a two ninety nine book. Absolutely, we'll hold that line. 
All right, Drew, this is the point of the podcast where we ask for your sneak peek at next week. What is the one book to make sure you head into your local comic book shop before February ends and say, hey, 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 I know we got to leave today, but I got to get this book. Man, I lost it. So I'm going to have to go back and find what I was picking out. Just my, I closed my window and then. Uh, my, so I'm my, caught between two my old secondary print. printings of the things that jumped out to me. Yeah. Of course, Beneath the Trees Where Nobody Sees, third print. And Moon Man, second print. Those are the two I'm kicking around. And I'm going to hang with Beneath the Trees Where Nobody Sees. Issue I one. Going third print. Third print of that. Very much like. That's cool. Struggling. I might have to go with your Moon Man reject then. <laughs> now we have some fourth week stuff, but like not a ton from our friends at Marvel and not a ton from our friends at DC that were over the top necessarily. And not yeah. a whole lot at issue one type things. So yeah, I mean I think I'll I think I'll go with Moon Man. Second print. Moon Man, the second printing for my boy Kid Cuddy. Can't beat that. And Kyle Higgins. And Kyle Higgins, absolutely. Well, thank you for tagging along with Drew and myself as we head through our sneak peek the, at this week. And we finish up February and head into March. We appreciate you guys being with us. Head on over to Patreon.com. Throw a couple bucks, get some exclusive items. Drew and I went and saw the very much talked about Madam Web. And boy, do we have opinions. We recorded. We said, let's do about 10 minutes on Madam Web. We hit an area half an hour talking about that beast. <laughs> and if you want that, head on over to Patreon.com. Throw a couple bucks and you will hear. Boy, there's a lot of opinions. It's already up. It's already up already on up. Patreon. Ready yeah. to rock. We appreciate mm-hmm. it. So thank you so much for Drew and for myself. Our LCS is Cowabunga Comics, Lake Country, Wisconsin's best pop culture destination for new comics, back issues, gaming, retro video games, vinyl, and figures. Give them a call, 262-569-9999. Check them out online at cowabungacomics.com or follow them on Twitter at Incredicow. Uh, They are our LCS and we utilize their deep discount mail order service to bring Economa Walk, Wisconsin, closer to us. They'll take care of you. Tell them Drew and Kyle sent you. Say hi to Eric and James from us. If you need an LCS, you can't go wrong with Cowabunga Comics.